So this is it. <laughs> of course, it came a long time too late, I thought, but that's life for us. First, I would like to introduce my family. Patricia Page, my grandchildren. Gay Slaughter, Sharon, and Bill Stokes, and Rhonda, would you stand? First, I want to thank the Veterans Committee for the great honor bestowing upon me to be here with you today. I want to thank the million of fans throughout this country and quite a few abroad. The letters and the fan mail, which I have received, kept my spirit up. I never dreamed back in 1935 that I would be standing here. Out of high school in 34, the Cardinals had a tribe camp in Greensboro, North Carolina. They invited me to that camp. Mr. Ricky says, if you make good, we'll pay your expenses. If you don't, you pay your own. <laughs> You know, I was a second baseman then. Trying to make a double play, they says, heck, he'll break his daggone neck. We got to get him out of there. Of course, I was hitting the ball pretty good. They signed me up to a contract to Martinsville, Virginia for $75 a month. And then, you know, I'm gonna correct one thing. I moved from there, Columbus, Georgia, 1936. I've always ran out of everything from home plate. I came in from the outfield. In third base dug, I was a long ways back, and I walked in. And that is when Eddie Dyer said, kid, if you're tired, I'll get you some help. <laughs> and from that day on, I learned to hit the top step running and hit it coming in. To me, running was my greatest asset. I'll go back one step. In 1935, in spring training, there was a man by the name of Billy Southworth in Hat Bowl, which was my first manager. There was a question mark beside of my name. They said, kid, if we can't improve your running, the Cardinals is going to release you. We want you to go to the outfield and practice running on your toes. And I did for three days. I increased my speed by four steps. I stayed in the game for 27 years because I could run. <laughs> I'll touch a few spots. I know it's hot out there and I'm not gonna keep it too long myself. In 1940, I left St. Louis hitting 371. Came back three weeks later, I was hitting 216. Three for 82. That's hard to believe, but it happened. But those same pitches that made me sweat June, July, August, and September, I came back and hit 306. Of course, to me, they talk about great teams, great thrills. The 42 Cardinals 
to me is the greatest team I ever played on. That was the ball team. We had pride. We had everything that you would want. That World Series was a happy one for me and a sad one. Because on the 27th day of August, I enlisted into the Air Force. And I had a great year. Should have led the league that year, 318. Lombardi went about 309 times, hit 330, so they gave him the batting title. And I think it was changed after that. You got to go about a lot more. I served my country just like I played baseball. I asked no odds and give none. If they wanted me to clean the latrine, I did it. If they wanted me on KP, I did it. So finally I went overseas, Saipan, Tinian, Guam, Iwo Jima. We had a lot of men over there. There was a lot of major league ball players, which went with me, 48 I was to be exact, American and National League. We played baseball. I knew a chief in the CBs from East St. Louis. He took bow noses. Make, built us a ball of diamond on the white coral reefs. Every game, we have eight, 10,000 people. We took bomb crates and built bleaches. I played there with desire, as I played here. It was a sad day. In 53, spring of 54, I was a cardinal. When they called me and said, we've sold you to the Yankees. At that time, it did hurt. As time went on, I was fortunate the, card the Cardinals would not win pennant at that time. I went from one great organization to another one, the New York Yankees. <laughs> you know, my fans was in the Middle West. Of course, who can ever forget Ebbets Field? To me, Ebbets Field had the greatest fans in baseball. And going to New York, playing for Casey Stengel, I enjoyed every day that I was there. Of course, I won't play quite as much as I wanted to. So I went to the professor, as Kate said, Casey, I would like to play more. He says, my boy, you play when I want you to play and you'll be around a long time. <laughs> of course, you know then, I broke my arm in three places in 54 which we won 104 games, but the Cleveland Indians won 111. We finished second. That's when you know that the athletics moved to Kansas City.
At the age of 39, the Yankees thought I needed more experience. They sold me to KC. I joined Boudreaux over there, had a great year, hit 315. So the Yankees got in trouble in 56. They had Byron Mantle in the outfield, Collins a bad back, Seaborn a bad leg. They were hurting. So Casey went to Mr. Wise and said, buy Slaughter back. Mr. Wise says, heck, he's 40 years old. Casey says, I don't care, buy him back. I'll never forget Mr. Johnson coming into the ballpark in Washington. He was talking to Boudreaux. I came out in the shower. We were leaving that night at midnight to go to Boston. Doublehead on Sunday. When I came out in the shower, Boudreaux says, Eno, step in here. He said, we've sold you back to the Yankees. I says, I'm satisfied here. So, you know, we were riding train at that time. Boudreaux took me down to the train station. We found our luggage, found my bag. I hopped the plane from New York. Detroit had been a great nemic to the Yankees in that era. I think we were 22 and 6, I think. That's where they had us. We were playing Detroit doubleheader that Sunday. I'll never forget it. I played in both games at doubleheader and only got five for nine. <laughs> we left there and then went to Chicago. And old Rex Brady, Dick Donovan. He had me 0 for 4. 12th inning. I hit one of the seats, went 2 to 1. So I think I helped the Yankees win the pennant in 56. You know the Dodgers had the Yankees down two games to nothing in the World Series. Roger Craig had Whitey Ford, my roommate, two to one. And I hit a three run home in the seventh, put us back on track. From there we went on to be world champions again. Of course in 19 and 57, Milwaukee beat the Yankees. We came back in 59, uh, 58. And I can remember the last game in Milwaukee. I think the Braves had every bell and horn in Milwaukee. But when Bill Scourin hit the home run in the ninth inning, they all disappeared and was quiet. So those are great moments for me. I'm not going to take any more of your time. I could sit here and talk the rest of the evening, but I know it's hot. And I promised them I wouldn't be here long. Now, I'd like to have Ted Williams step up here. What is it, sir? Here's the baseball, the dead hit <laughs> in 19 and 41. Beat the National League. <laughs> and you're giving that to me, I'm dear friend. Geez, thank you, Enos. Thank you. And this is such a world wonderful tribute to a hell of a player today. Thank you.